Welcome to another tech video from Frimley Computing. So today we are going to be looking at how you can set up um, your CCTV cameras using a surveillance station on your QNAP device. So for us, we've just purchased this Rio Link E1 zoom camera. Um, it was only £55. Uh, it's really good quality and uh, it's a Wi-Fi camera and we are going to be showing you how you can stream from the camera to your QNAP device. So without further ado, let's have a look at the QNAP device and what we need to do to set up our surveillance station. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is open up your QNAP device and what we're going to do is first of all we're going to create a new user, then we're going to create a file system and then we're going to install the application. So to create the new user, you want to go to your control panel and then users. And we're going to create a single user that we're going to use for the surveillance station. So we're going to call this CCTV. And we're going to call this uh, passwords. Okay, so we're going to leave that as that's so all we've done, create the username and the password and the group is going to be in the everyone group, so we're going to create that user like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our volume and um, storage area. So we're going to go and navigate to storage and snapshots and then we're going to go to storage and snapshots and we're going to click on create new volume <clears throat> and we're going to create it with a thick volume so this is going to pre-allocate the volume size for us whereas a thin volume uh, will grow on demand we're going to create it in storage pool one because we've only got one storage pool and we're going to call this cctv and we're going to set it to 500 gig to start with and we are going to create it with 8k bytes inodes and we're going to create a shared folder on the file system uh, so we're going to create a shared folder on the volume in other words the file system called CCTV as well just double check it all okay and then click on finish So once that's created, we can then install the uh, the application that we want. <clears throat> we can actually install that now. So we're going to go to App Center. And we're going to come down to the on the left hand side to surveillance. And we're going to use this one here called <coughs> surveillance station. So uh, you get this is a paid for licensed piece of software however you get two cameras um, for free so if you've got uh, a couple of cameras then you can use that without purchasing additional licenses for additional cameras so we're going to click on install and this installs on our system partition it doesn't install on our CCTV partition we're going to be using the CCTV volume and file system for storing the camera footage Okay, so once your application is installed, we're going to click on, make sure that the, uh, the volume is created, so it's optimizing at the moment, that's absolutely fine, so we can close that down, we can open our surveillance station. Now we don't use FTP because we have that uh, completely disabled on our NAS drive um, but if you're using it then you can either enable the service um, you don't actually need it to record your camera footage um, so we're going to say later for that. Once that's done um, we're 
going to go to our advanced settings because we need to tell the system where the recordings are kept. And as you can see here, it's selected our CCTV. Um, if, it, if it's not showing the correct volume, then you just select the volume and you select your folder name as well. And if you need to create a new volume, then you can create a volume by using this link here. However, we've done it previously. So um, in terms of the settings, so recording length and keep period. So as you can see here, um, when the storage space is less than 5%, it will overwrite the oldest recordings. And we've selected that we want to keep um, the minimum number of alarm recordings kept for 14 days. So um, any alarms that you set um, to be triggered will keep for 14 days. Uh, alarm recording, you want to record 30 seconds before the event occurs and stop recording 30 seconds after the event occurs. This is configurable, of course. Okay, so um, next we move on to privilege settings and we're going to go into our user that we created and as you can see here it's telling us that there's no camera configured so that's the next thing that we want to do we can see here that we've got our two channels for our two included cameras um, so the first thing that we want to do is we now need to configure a camera so before we start that we need to find our camera on the network and we're going to use angry ip scanner to find the camera so we're going to be having a look here and our camera is actually called office and it's a Rio link e1 zoom so we know our IP address so we can now add the camera let's move that off there so we're going to click on the add button for camera one and we're going to don't need to search for the camera automatically because we're using the IP address so we're going to use channel 1 and we're now going to select our camera brand. So we're going to scroll all the way down till we find Rio Link. And we're going to select our camera model, which is the E1 Zoom. And we now need to give it um, an IP address. We can give it a name as well, so we're going to name it the same as the camera. And we're going to put in our IP address, which was 192.168.0.177. We're going to keep the ports default. We're not setting a WAN IP address because it's only available on our internal network. We don't access the camera from outside of the network. And we want to input the username and password for the camera. Hopefully that's the right password. And then we're going to click on test to see if it can find the camera on the network, which it has done. Um, so you need to adjust your properties uh, if you come up with a red cross, but a green tick here suggests that uh, our camera has been found and the username and password are correct. So now we're going to click on next to add the camera. And then we're going to select the video settings um, that we want to record in. So this is based on your camera, so uh, it will read what the camera can do and then give you the various options here. So we're going to select the defaults. We're going to select um, enable the audio recording on the camera. We're going to select enable manual recording and then we're going to also select the minimum number of days of recording files are kept and we're going to select uh, 14 days there. Now we're going to click on next. Okay, so this is quite important. So for us, we are not going to be telling our system to record all of the time. At the moment, as you can see, with everything set to active, um, it will record constantly to your NAS drive. Um, so we're going to disable that. So we're going to say we don't want to enable scheduled recording because we're actually going to only be using the camera to record um, triggered events. So we're going to select next double check your settings again there click next and that will then create the camera and then click on finish so what we've got here we've got our camera 
set, the resolution, the frame rate, um, and other options. So we go back to our camera overview and we can see here that it's set to idle because it's not recording. Uh, normal function is um, naught days and alarm is naught days as well. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to go in and I think it's under camera configuration. No, it's not. Okay, so it's under event management. So we want to go into event management and what we want to do is we're going to select traditional mode and as you can see here, channel one, this is our camera name, the IP address and alarm recordings is off. So what we want to do is we want to set our alarm recordings to on and we want to start recording when motion is detected by the camera and we want to activate alarm recording only on the scheduled, selected schedule. So as you can see here, we've got basic mode. We're going to have that um, alarm monitoring for all days and all day every day basically so what this is going to do it means it's going to um, when an event is triggered it's going to record no matter what time of day it is so for instance if you only wanted to um, select certain days so if you only wanted to have that triggered on the weekends for instance then you can set that your all of your various options here and you can select your custom um, durations there but for us we're going to be setting it for all day every day if there's motion detection detected it will start recording so we want to apply that to our camera and as you can see here the alarm recordings is now set to on and then we're going to apply that to the system okay so that is it in terms of the configuration so the next thing that you want to do is you want to download the um, QVR application so when you click on playback for the first time it will prompt you to download uh, the QVR application from the uh, NAS drive so this will come from the surveillance station on your NAS drive and you can then um, when you run this you can input your credentials for your system um, and this will give you a view to your streamed footage on your NAS drive. So you can do it obviously from this system by clicking on playback or monitor. So if we go to monitor for instance, this is using the actual um, QVR monitor application from the NAS drive and as you can see here, this is a, a picture of our camera feed. This is a live view. Um, if you want to go to your triggered uh, events, you would click on the playback option here that will then open the playback and as you can see here we haven't got any recordings so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger an event to make sure that that records so we'll close this these down for now um, and as you can see well, if we go to camera overview it's saying not recording at the moment if I go and walk in front of the camera you should see this change to recording So I've just walked in front of the camera and you can clearly see that this is now recording the event. So um, the default is five minutes, but you can change that to set that um, for your, uh, however long you want to record. So if we go into um, event management, I can't remember where it is actually. So I just need to find that. There we go, the maximum length of each recording file is five minutes. So this will record five minutes worth plus 30 seconds before the event was triggered and 30 seconds after the event. But as you can see here, this is fully adjustable. You can record up to 15 minutes or you can just record one minute, which means that you get lots of triggers. Um, so we, we've just accepted the default of uh, five minutes. <clears throat> Okay, so that is the surveillance station set up all completed. So you can close that down and we can close this down. And then if we go into our file station and go into our CCTV, 
um, and you can see here under the record NVR alarm this will then create your channel one which is your camera one your date stamp and then your folder um, with the event actually in here recorded so we're going to close that down okay so the next thing we're going to do now we've got the NAS drive closed down we're just going to use our QVR application to sign in now um, Ours, we've already pre-input all of the details, but it will ask you for an IP address. Now, that is the IP address of your NVR, which in this instance would be the IP address of your um, NAS drive. And it will ask you for a username and password, so um, you can either use your um, user that you created, or you can just use the admin credentials of your NAS drive as well. So if we click that open, that will open up our QVR application. Now the QVR application that we're using here um, will automatically stream from your NVR, so in other words the NAS drive here that we've got, um, but you can set it so that you can um, stream directly from the camera if you wish. So as you can see here we've got an enable alert for a surveillance event. Um, we haven't got any other alerts because we um, regularly uh, monitor our NAS drive for storage space, but you can do that. And this is under the video options here. You can say stream from the server or stream from the network camera, but we're going to be streaming from the server. Um, you can take snapshots. So a snapshot will be take a, take a photograph, basically. Um, and then also we've told it that... Um, when you're doing your playback it's going to display the date and time in the left hand corner of the video. That's what that means. The other options down here, uh, manual recording is disabled so we can enable that um, and that will enable us to um, manually record if we want to. We just, as you can see here, this option is now available. We can click on that and that will enable us to manually record or with that disabled um, then that option is not available for us. You can see that the option disappears. Um, enable audio. If you want to um, enable the audio on the camera setting, so again up here that is set to enabled. And again you can go into the camera setting directly from here. So if we click on yes to that prompt, we're then going to use the uh, the camera setting and we can enable recording on the camera and uh, various other options so you can change your video format your streaming format for instance so if you're finding that um, the quality is not good enough then you can increase the size of your resolution the quality in other words the bit rate and also the frame rate as well you can do that manually um, on your system direct from this application um, take a snapshot if you want to take a photo um, if you want to enable digital zoom, then you've got the ability to do that here. Um, PZ, PTZ mode, so let's go into that. Um, this will give us the toolbar so that actually we can then start controlling our camera to move the camera around. So if we click over there, you can see it's over there. And we can now move it back. Okay, we've got an event notification and we can see the alarm warning there. move that back and then we can disable the alarm there we can go in here and we'll clear those alerts like that and then if, once you're finished with your um, camera moving your camera around to position it you can close that um, like that have a play with the system, um, it's really good. Uh, if you want to add another camera, then you just need to go through the same steps that we've added one here already on the uh, on the NAS device. But in terms of setting up your NVR and your camera, um, that is all there is to it. So um, if you found that video useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just like to say thanks for watching, it really does help. And uh, we will see you in the next one.